how has uh, Dawn started? How did you uh, come up with the idea and what's your mission with it? Well, firstly, I just wanted to come up with a name of a company that sounded just like my name. So that was <laughs> the most important thing. Um, no, so Dawn, Dawn started because um, I just shut down my last company. Um, I'd gone through a fairly stressful time. Um, over that period, I'd uh, suffered like a lot of people do with um, extreme lack of uh, sleep, anxiety, um, you know, borderline insomnia through the stress. And I'd gone through an experience of um, you know, declining personal mental health, which obviously happens to uh, lots of people as we're increasingly made aware. Um, a friend, and I tried all sorts of things, um, meditation, breathing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, a friend of mine bought me a book called Optimum Nutrition for the Mind. Um, it was all about eating uh, certain foods and having certain supplements uh, designed essentially for brain health. And I was pretty skeptical, I have to say, um, but I was willing to try anything. And I essentially shifted up my diet, started eating more of the brain related foods, having the supplements that were recommended um, in this book and spending more time focused there and was astounded to find that it had a huge resounding impact on me. Um, and then reality is um, my experience was the more I read about it, the more I found it interesting, but fairly complex. So it's all very jargon filled, um, scientific, nerdy and all over the place. So quite hard to find good content that was relatable to me all in one place. So I decided to start um, a newsletter with Dawn where because I was reading science journals anyway, um, and looking for the latest information because I've become so interested in it, I decided to write something that would appeal to people like myself that wanted to essentially find out the gems of the information, um, but ultimately didn't have all the time to read giant books, etc. So I started a newsletter where I shared what I was reading each week, which was uh, something from nutrition for the brain, something from psychology and something from neuroscience every single week, all from uh, scientific factual journals. And then I turned it into something that was, I guess, completely in my tone, which, as you know, Michael, is uh, fairly jovial with the odd, uh, the odd sad joke here or there. Mm. No, it's, it's very recognizable you. So, and so what are your plans with it? Uh, do you have like a specific goal in mind with how to grow the list? Uh, do you have like yeah. a smarter you I, want to reach at some point? Yeah, actually. Um, so, we, you know, <laughs> Uh, we did some work on, uh, you know, on our vision, mission, purpose, etc. And I, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, with mission, the concept that mission should always be uh, big but achievable. Um, and if you can have a number towards it, that really helps. And then you change your mission. Uh, so, um, you know, for us, it's to enable our community to achieve one million meaningful goals. So uh, we're quite purposeful here in, um, in in setting a mission that sets us on a path to understanding uh, what our community is actually engaging with, what goals they're setting for themselves and uh, how we're going to help them achieve it. Um, and what's important about that is it helps us set some of the direction about some of the products and services we will eventually create to do so. Great. So the goal is now from a purely commercial standpoint is that you will grow the list and then based on the insights that you get with with what your audience likes, you will then create products. Correct. So, well, sort of, sort of correct. I'll, I will uh, reiterate it slightly. So our focus as a business is to uh, help elevate cognitive performance for people. So that will come with a range of services and products and content. But what we're deeply interested in is if we're actually making a difference for people. Mm -hmm. So instead of, for example, having a mission that is um, to have a million subscribers, or a million people buying our products, it's actually having a, uh, helping our community to achieve one million meaningful goals. So one person might have 10 goals and we can hopefully understand how we've helped them achieve all 10. And another person might just have one and it's understanding how we've helped them achieve just that one. Excellent. And those goals are of course all related to cognitive performance. That's the main yeah. thing you want to grow. It, correct. And do people share these goals with you already? Yes, they do. Interestingly, I mean, you know, you've caught me in a, in a good week because we've now had uh, two handwritten letters this week into the office. Um, and when does that happen? Yeah, really cool. So we had two handwritten letters into the office uh, from people that um, actually shared what their goals were 
um, and how the newsletter has uh, given them ideas on how to do them and, and where they are in their journey at the moment from doing it, which I think is really cool. We do get emails every single Sunday um, with feedback because we do a shout out every week for feedback, things that people want us to improve, share what they're doing, etc. So we get that anyway. But um, this time we actually had, uh, like I say, two handwritten letters to the office. And what types of goals are these generally? Um, this is the really nice thing about it. Um, so for a lot of people, it's, it's actually performance based. So it's, um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of it relates to productivity and workplace stuff. Um, so it's quite often, you know, people wanting to do more or get extra, uh, you know, perform better at their jobs so they can get more money, blah, 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 is a very obvious one. But actually, in a couple of examples we've had this week, it's been from people that have been um, uh, like made redundant and you know uh, want to find the right thing. So their goal is to find the right thing, not just the thing that they need to do to make money. And so being more purposeful with their time and how they're selecting. Um, so it is quite a wide range. It's quite interesting to see what people uh, identify as their goals. And it must be incredibly motivating for you because it's such a great area to work in. You help people improve themselves uh, on a daily basis. That's great. Yeah. So well, yeah, what's nice is, and I'm very careful to say this, like we work with nutritionists, dietitians, um, biochemists, and now neuroscientists as well. So we have some amazing advisors working with the business. And, um, you know, a lot of the really smart insight obviously comes from them. I'm just a front man, as you'll know anyway from knowing me. That's what I do best. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you know, I'm not I'm not the genius coming up with this stuff. That's why I'm very clear to say, um, genuinely, there, like none of the opinions really are my own. They are literally things from science journals that have been researched by scientists. So we always uh, link to the science. We link to the scientists that came up with the study, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the reality is, these are actionable, positive things that people can do um, every single week for their brain health. And so, do you have these people on full time, or are they just external advisors? No, external advisors. Um, so there's a lot of people that we pay um, per, per day or even per hour. You can find some, if you want like some really top level people with a ton of experience. Very fortunately for us, some of them go by the hour and what they can give you in an hour is worth, you know, a year's worth of, <laughs> of time and energy for someone else. Of course, of course. So let's talk about your email list because that's the most interesting thing for our audience who are very often struggling to get uh, to get new email signups. You, in a pretty short amount of time, got yourself to 4,000. Yeah. And so I'm curious, how did you get there beyond the, I mean, you're very well connected in the, in, in uh, the London entrepreneurship community. So I assume like right off the bat, you can get some 500, 600 email addresses from that. So in, in just theory, tell me the story, how did you get to the 4,000? Yeah, so in theory, what you've just said, you're right. Like, I, I, I think I would be able to do that. But I mean, you're on, you're on the same list as I am. And I actually haven't um, done a shout out on any list to join the newsletter in any kind of obvious way, because my feeling about that is I kind of I'm more interested in understanding how people naturally get there. Like, I think it is helpful to have friends join lists and all the rest of it, but the reality is it can also really skew your understanding of what your numbers really are. So um, I have far less friends on the list than I would like, which I don't know whether it means that I should reevaluate who my friends are or not, but ultimately <laughs> you need people that really deeply care about what you're writing about. That's where you get the most, uh, the most value. So I've been quite careful not to, I guess, give myself uh, false positives. Um, the reality is, um, the first thousand happened really easily, uh, way easier than I was expecting. Like the list was, uh, you know, not even doubling and tripling, obviously in the first thousand is, is considerably more than that quite quickly. Um, and that was literally from, I mean, I do things like obviously like, like you would so like spamming Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook, um, I then made a promise to myself that I would uh, do video, uh, as in I would go on, because obviously LinkedIn video is very popular. I have quite a lot of followers on LinkedIn, so I thought that would be a good place to do it. Um, I, as you know, I have a podcast. I really enjoy audio. I don't actually feel that comfortable in front of video, so I made it like my big challenge to do from January, because I knew that I was going to be launching this email list from January. Um, and so I did a few videos on LinkedIn, which actually did, I have to say, work. Um, embarrassingly, I've, I've 
I've calmed down on that again. Basically, I, I think when you write a lot about brain health, it's it's good to embrace your own your own mental health and your own frailties as well. And frankly, some days I'm like, oh, I feel confident. I said I do this. I'm going to do a video. It's fine. And some days I just I can't even bear the thought of being that guy doing it. Um, so I've stunted, I think, my own growth quite a lot of times through just simple self-doubt and not having the confidence to go in front of the video. But that is literally the most effective thing that I've done. Like every time I've done a video encouraging people what um, what is going to be in this week's newsletter and why they should sign up, that's had the best results by a long way. Um, and similarly, doing the same thing on Instagram. Again, this is the complication. Like They are the things that have had the best results, but I haven't done either of those things in the last month because I just haven't felt like I'm in the right mindset to do it. And I don't know why, um, but as anyone that's, you know, pitched themselves on a video before and then spent the entire time judging whether or not they look like a twat knows, um, you, you sometimes can't talk yourself into it even if it's in your best interests. That's really interesting. In my experience, the, the, the videos where I thought I look and sound like a twat um, are some of my most successful ones. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's completely unrelated. I mean, unless you do something objectively stupid. But uh, other than that, it's completely unrelated. The, the self-image that we have of ourselves is completely wrong with what, what people perceive. Absolutely. And like, I, it's so funny because I write about this stuff. Uh, this is why it's so interesting. It's so meta. I write about it. I know it. I talk about it. I do it. And then my own insecurities like still outweigh my rational brain to know that it's the best thing for my business. So I just haven't done it for a month. But I guess to anyone that's comfortable with this stuff, um, I can categorically say that the, the video reach has been by far the most powerful in terms of uh, signups. And then I think also uh, consistency. So um, you know, the fact that we have sent one out now every single week for this week's, um, toes of fat, this week's week 27. Um, so it's been going for a while. There's a lot of consistency. Um, I changed up the format, um, uh, like a, a short while into it. So one of the things I've done that's good is I've embraced community feedback. And then early on in the journey, I was sharing what the community feedback actually was and why we were making changes. Um, one of the last things we did was change some of the design um, because like any startup, you know, your resources are so limited and you're like, you know, there are so many other levers to pull, pull right now. Like I can't genuinely believe, even though people are saying it so often, I can't really believe that design of the email and how it looks is really affecting people so much. But interestingly, um, the open rates actually have improved since then. And that's because one of the titles we actually did was around having a design change. And that's the thing, if you're going to do something like that based on community feedback, I think you actually have to signpost it. Um, what do you mean? This, what do you mean signpost it? Well, signpost it as in, like, if you imagine, like, how people open emails, our open rate was sort of declining and people kept saying, you know, the design kind of annoyed them how it was looking. Uh -huh. So we went to the trouble to redesign it. But if you don't tell people that you've redesigned it, and it's a small redesign, it's nothing major. So we don't have a team of designers here and we're not investing heavily into it in any kind of way. Um, but it was a small enough design change that it was one. So therefore, I'm assuming because we signposted that there had been a design change, it then made people feel like they were listened to. Got so it. they opened it, saw it was changed, and I think re-engaged again. But it's like, if you imagine the hardest, like email is such an interesting format because the hardest thing to get right is the subject line. If the subject line doesn't work, then you don't get your opens, which means there's so much great content wasted. Yeah. Uh, the just briefly before we get into open rate uh, about the the list. So you could you like attribute the sources? Like let's say you would say your LinkedIn and Instagram videos made for eighty percent of your list. Yeah, growth. yeah, yeah, and but about seventy percent. My personal email and my my personal LinkedIn and Instagram was about seventy percent. And we tried a bunch of other things as well. Um, and it's still the highest highest traffic source. Perfect. And so, sorry, oh, okay, something, else, something else that I did actually, which has been quite effective, is I set up an automated um, an automated welcome message to people following me on Instagram and LinkedIn. Uh huh. And that's had a really good click through rate. In interesting. So anybody who follows you on Instagram or LinkedIn gets, by the act of following you, an automated yeah. message. Yeah, an automated message that says, hey, I'm Dan, I co-founded this thing called Dawn, this is what we do each week, have a, like, have a look here if it's interesting to you. 
And that is a direct message on that platform, on LinkedIn yeah. or Instagram. Yeah. Very interesting. I haven't heard about that. I, I need to look into this. Yeah, that's been really effective. Great. Uh, I don't want to keep you much longer. We're already over time, but quickly about the 55% open rate, which is truly yes. outstanding. Uh, yes. What's your secret there? Is it the subject lines? Um, is it the fact well, that you, maybe you're not selling anything? Yes, I think that really helps. I think it really helps to not be selling anything. Like the only thing we're selling essentially is self-improvement. If you think about it, like it's got the right ingredients on the basis of nothing that I'm sharing isn't scientifically proven, but it would be boring to find. So it's like I'm doing a job of curation every week, which people really value curation at the moment, right? That's like uh, there's so much information out there. So if you find a source of information that you trust and you think is respectable, then the idea of having the news curated for you and something you're interested in is good. And then, you know, we're selling self-improvement. So every week, even if you don't vibe on the, on the neuroscience or psychology point of view, knowing about a superfood or an ingredient and why it's good for your brain is something actionable that everyone can go and do tomorrow. So that promise of not knowing what's in the next one is a really good lever to having a high open rate. But also, you know, I have to say like we haven't done any like real growth tactics on the newsletter. So because it's being like a very organic growth rate at the moment, I think that keeps the, the open rate really high. I think when you start trying to acquire users onto a newsletter, which of course we will have to at some point, because, um, you know, I have lofty ambitions and they don't stop here. So when you start doing that, I, was, I would definitely anticipate it being very reasonable for it to decline. And also you have to imagine, like, I, you know, I, you guys are a B2B side and we're a B2C. And so 4,000 is like small fries in B2C. Of course, of course. Are you doing any subject line testing, A-B testing? Yes, uh, we are. So there is, um, I'm just going to get the website up so that I know that I'm actually telling the truth. Yeah, we literally use a service called subjectlinetesting.com. Uh -huh. And um, very simply, you put your name, you, you put your subject in and it goes back to like a control group of, uh, you know, a control group of people. So you put like obviously two different subject lines in and it goes to people in your target demographic and you see which ones they would have opened more. Interesting. And that is purely AI or is that does it test? No, that's, no, yeah, it's like a market research company and literally it goes to real people and you see what they open and what they don't. Okay. Obviously that's a paid it's real people, it's not AI. And it's small numbers, but it's actually been really indicative and helpful for us. Okay. And it's obviously a paid service. It's a paid service, but yeah. I think there's I think there's definitely free credits that you can get on it. Got it. Excellent. And then uh, Finally, is there any other lessons learned from, from Don? Any like content types that you have learned that work best with people? Anything unexpected? Um, well, you know, I think as tacky as it is, like it's the being yourself thing. So people know, like my example is, you know, I've got cats, I love cats. Everyone that knows me knows that I love my cats. So I talk about my cats in my newsletter. And, you know, I often make a cat reference if I can. Um, or if there's a lab rat, I refer to like how my cat might eat that lab rat. You know, it's little things, little quirks like that, that people always feedback that they love and know that it's me writing it. Okay, so uh, injecting personality into it. Yeah, personality is, is, the, is the succinct answer to that question. Excellent. Dan, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And what can people do to, um, uh, to find out more about Dan? Well, they can go to trydawn.co as in .co. Brilliant. And there they can sign up. How often do you send newsletters? Every Sunday. And um, on our Instagram, which is we are Dawn, we, uh, we do uh, a, an image to make you think every day. So usually riddles so you can use your brain. Brilliant. Wonderful mission. I hope uh, your success continues at this pace. And thank you so much for taking the time. Stay away, Mike. Thank you very much. Alrighty.